What's up, folks? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, all, and welcome to another fine episode of the Marketing for Coaches show. With Just baby. coming on screen right now, we have our very special guest, Opal Pacheco. Um, she'll be joining us. Doesn't have, well, I was going to say she doesn't have as sharp a marketing mind as we do, but that's probably not true at this point. She's probably absorbed at least as much as we both already know in her time in meetings with us. <laughs> But today, we're going to talk for a few minutes, and Opal might talk as well. We'll see what happens. Uh, Panda will be silent the entire time. <laughs> but we're going to talk a little bit about something that you're, at the very least, sort of aware of. It's almost certainly bothered you or bugged you or annoyed you at some point in the last couple of years, couple of months, couple of days, <laughs> given how this works. We talk a lot about LinkedIn for obvious, obvious reasons, but we don't talk a lot, at least we haven't yet, about the spam problem. Now, you have almost certainly at this point gotten at least one spammy direct message from LinkedIn or some sort of sponsored content thing where it's just like it's so clearly an offer. And sometimes there's value there, sometimes not. Michael, you have something to, to insert there first? I'm going to jump in here real quick. If you haven't received one of these messages, I want you to reach out to me right now and tell me what your secret is. <laughs> <laughs> And don't tell my me your secret is you only have like five connections. <laughs> my agency is my that, that email will come straight to me. I need <laughs> Kevin, go ahead. <laughs> and yeah, your secret can't be that you're not on LinkedIn. That's that's, that's not a secret. It doesn't count. <laughs> but and obviously spam is it's it's been a it's been a near constant issue of anyone who's online for any reason, personally, professionally, since email really, you know took the world by storm all those decades ago. We don't need to talk about how long ago. But in particular on LinkedIn, the spam thing is it's, it's becoming an issue, especially as people lean more on LinkedIn for its relationship building properties. It's become such a relationship builder and connector and grower of not just networks in the form of like numbers and connections, but actual real relationships that are leading to leading to lifelong partnerships and collaborations and new clients and hot leads. Like it's really, it's really become strong in that way. And with that strength comes the inevitable spam. Now there's a couple of things about spamminess or, or spam on LinkedIn that I want to address directly to you. One of them is how to kind of just look at spam and be able to like turn like filter well, you, Michael, and also you, the the listener, the viewer, the watcher, the avid fan of this show, all however many of you dozens. <laughs> but there's like the how to how to like just kind of navigate and how to make sure that you're like tuning into the kind of kind of direct messages and the kind of connections you want to have, having those kinds of conversations on your own end and not letting the spam kind of turn you away from what has become a very powerful business platform. And also how to not appear spammy yourself it could be very easy to slip into a sort of way of interacting on linkedin say you have like certain templates that you use to respond to people and you want to make sure those templates are personalized like you want it to be infused with the personal touch because you're genuinely trying to show up on linkedin in a way that builds relationships and there's only 24 hours in the day. There's only seven days in the week. You can't manually type out, you, you can't like do a handwritten letter on a carrier pigeon to everybody's DMs and respond in kind. You do have to take these kind of like time-saving shortcuts without showing up in people's DMs like your spam. Because the last thing you want to do is show up as annoying. The last thing you want to do is show up as a buzz, as just noise. So I've talked enough. Let me tee you up. You talk because you obviously you're on the you're on the front lines of of LinkedIn spam. You're very active on LinkedIn. And so you get a lot of DMs that you're not exactly looking for. <laughs> so you talk for a few minutes, Michael, about your experience with oh. with spam on LinkedIn and also making sure that you don't show up in a spammy fashion on LinkedIn. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. I was just uh, I was just in another window looking up carrier pigeon on Craigslist. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah. What was the question? <laughs> how, how do you, how do you dealing in LinkedIn so often as you do and building a lot of great relationships on LinkedIn, how do you both deal with the volume of spam that you get in your DMs without, in, in such a way as to not like, you know, filter out, like, you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater, still make good connections that way. And also how do you, what do you do to try to avoid showing up as spam seeming or spam adjacent yourself when you're trying to like reach out and connect with people on LinkedIn? 
Love it, brother. Love it. Um, incidentally, they don't have carrier pigeons on Craigslist that I could find. Um, I'll <laughs> Facebook Marketplace and offer up later. Um, the first problem, receiving spam on on LinkedIn, you know, there's, there's only so much you can do. Right? You, I mean, you, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. You can ignore it. You can mark it as spam. If it's like clearly spam, dude, I, I will mark that as spam all day long, mm-hmm. uh, especially if it's from if it's spam to me from a competitor i will mm. definitely that is spam all day long <laughs> <laughs> um, because it's spam and and they're a competitor right i, I mean that's just that, that seems logical so you know if if it's just something that you're not interested i mean yeah you got options you can market a spam you can ignore it you can delete it you can report the person whatever um more importantly i think is showing up in other people's LinkedIn inboxes, not as spam, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you just gotta keep it real, right? LinkedIn LinkedIn is a relationship platform, mm-hmm. full stop, right? It, you don't, it's not a sales platform. Nobody, nobody hops on, on LinkedIn, <laughs> nobody hops on LinkedIn being like, gosh, you know, I really need to, I need to, I need some marketing services. I should go check LinkedIn. <laughs> Not nobody that I know. I don't think. Nobody period. <laughs> nobody ever, nobody's, nobody ever did it like that. <laughs> if you know that reference, please comment down below and we'll love you forever. Just, just know that. Nobody ever <laughs> made them like that. Um, nobody ever did that. Honestly, like, you know what I mean? Like LinkedIn is a relationship platform. It's not a sales platform. The best thing that you can do is go on there be genuine, be authentic, be yourself, be goofy, have fun, take your baby onto a podcast. <laughs> uh, just be yourself, right? And 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 stop trying to sell shit on mm-hmm. LinkedIn, pardon my French, um, but also not, right? Because that's just, I'm being me again, right? This is just, Michael, Michael, Michael says naughty words sometimes. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Michael talks about himself in the third person sometimes. Michael's got some weird energy because Michael's been sick for the last week. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if there's one thing that YouTube rewards, it's weird energy. There you (laughs) go. In my experience. That's a good point. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, I'm kind of, I don't want to beat the the dead horse, so to speak. But I think the best thing you can do is just, just be yourself, be authentic, and be genuine about you're about wanting to 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 get to know people about building relationship mm-hmm. um it's not you know obviously obviously we're all on there as professionals mm-hmm. so we're all on there to you know uh, to to help us make money i mean that's what linkedin was literally built for is a network of professionals mm-hmm. um but the key word there is is network mhm and that's a relationship game. It's not a sales game. Um, sales, you know, sales is is an effect, not the cause. I guess if that makes sense. Um, Good point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Sales, sales comes. Sales might happen, but it comes down the line. The, the, the what you want to do, what I do, try to do, what I try to do, mm. is is be helpful, provide value. Mm. And I'm not talking. I just actually we we just. Uh, I just approved some new content um, that we are running through our own social omnipresence program where I give six tips on um, doing this kind of thing, doing social media content in LinkedIn. And one of those things is to provide one of those steps, one of those tips is to provide actual value. And this is what I'm talking about here. Forget the fluff, right? Providing value. It doesn't, you know, you actually, you actually want to solve people's problems. Mm-hmm. Don't you- don't just come up with something and say, hey, look at me, I'm being valuable and parrot what everyone else is saying. Think about who your prospects are, who your ideal client is. What problems do they actually have today that you can help them solve? And mm-hmm. if you can do that, um, you know, the, this is, may not necessarily be in the inbox, but this may be like with, with content in, the fee, in your feed that you're creating, or it might yeah. be in the inbox, you're having a one-on-one conversation with someone, right? Mm-hmm. Actually help them. Actually, not just, you know, don't, don't give them fluffy platitudes and that kind of thing, but actually help them. <laughs> stuff. So, uh, I'm, I'm digressing. 
I'll stop. Yeah, and that's yeah. I was I was gonna say I want I want to cut you off because you're in a good spot, but also you're you're starting to like bleed into some of the other like LinkedIn power user tips and tactics that I mean honestly, if you're here and you're watching us, you're listening to us. This is the kind we talk about this kind of stuff all the time. We take it from a different angle all the time, but it obviously it bleeds into and centralizes in the same sort of core principles. Um, where it's just like yeah, like like you were saying, I want I wanted to tack on a pro tip before we wrap this little episode up. Um, it's something that I try to apply very rigorously. I've been practicing for years. And this goes for all of like, this goes for email. This goes for like, any kind of social media. And this goes for DMs. Um, I try to be templated with the personal touch. Mm-hmm. So like, say I've got like 10 or 15 people who are in my DMs about like guesting on the podcast or, or something like that. And I want to make sure that I respond to them all, but I don't just want to like, you know, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. So I can move on to like the other, other 15 things I have to do or the other like, you know, 20 messages in my, in my email inbox. Um, but I also, again, I've got 10 fingers, I've got 24 hours in the day, and I want to make sure that I get to everybody without just running myself ragged. So I'll have like some templates kind of written up that are more or less the right things I want to say, because typically I'm engaging in the very same way. I'm genuine in similar ways, especially when I'm talking with coaches. And so I'll have some things I'll start with. And then what I'll do is I'll make sure as I'll go through, and I won't just like, you know, slap, make sure the name's correct. So like, I'm talking about more than that. I'm talking about making sure that I like take a beat and it doesn't take that long to just like, you know, I'll glance at the, you know, the about section of somebody's profile. I'll look at their website real quick. Maybe I already know a little bit about them and I'll just make sure that like, you know, maybe I already talked to them for a podcast and we're talking about something else now. I'll just make sure to mention how I know them, how I know you so that you understand that like, you know, I might be sending out 15, 20, 50 messages today, but each one is getting my personal touch. And that allows me to really reach out and connect with people and be available to be connected with in a way that's not going to feel spammy. It's not going to feel robotic or templated. It's going to have my personal touch. And also I'm going to be able to log out at the end of the day and have some time with my family. (laughs) Like this little one. (laughs) We're having having family time in the the middle of a show. (laughs) (laughs) Living right. We're living right. All right. I should, we should wrap this one up. Um, obviously, I hope I hope you got value. And again, if you got that reference that Michael made, I'm not going to say it again. But if you got that reference, please, please, please reach out to us. We already love you and you don't even know it. <laughs> and if you have any other questions about what we've talked about, other things we've talked about previous, if you just want to like compliment how adorable Opal is, because let's be honest, she is. Drop it down like share and subscribe all that jazz to the channel we do this kind of stuff on the regular basis we've got a whole bunch of other stuff on the channel too so come on around come on by say hi watch us be ridiculous and also hopefully get that value that michael was talking about because that is our focus that is our foundation and you know we're gonna have a little fun while we're doing it so until next time oh one more thing real quick i think we should i think we should title this episode cats and dogs living together mass hysteria hysteria. i'm out (laughs) if his mic wasn't attached to his computer he would drop it (laughs) anyway we'll talk to you again soon